Hey everyone, welcome back to the Strange Gaming Sphere of weekly video game editorials, news, and gameplay. So today I wanted to talk to you about blockchain and gaming, specifically NFTs or non-fungible tokens. I'm sure some of you have seen the news lately on how NFTs are going to be this next big frontier in gaming. And so I wanted to go over like what they are, how they work, how they could potentially revolutionize the gaming experience as we know it, and how they could change the entire experience of playing a game like, let's say, Final Fantasy XIV. So just a little bit of personal background. I do have some technical expertise in computer science. I have developed web software as a service applications. I have also developed some rudimentary game engines, uh, first on Python and then on JavaScript. I was a little bit late to the blockchain game, but I've always been fascinated by the technology and its implications, specifically in banking, notary, art, and of course in video games. So in gaming today, we are sort of familiar with like in-game items, currency, and collectibles like the V-Bucks in Fortnite or you know, Rare in-game collectibles like in World of Warcraft, NFTs are basically taking all of this to the next level. So what it does is it provides verifiable digital ownership of unique items. Atari even recently launched a crypto gaming platform on Decentraland. Decentraland, for those of you who don't know, is a digital gaming world built on the Ethereum blockchain. And so they'll soon be allowing creators to mint and distribute NFT collectibles to its fans. And there are even cryptocurrencies out there that are designed to specifically be utilized within the gaming ecosystem, like Mana and Engine Coin. So just a quick disclaimer, because YouTube is finicky about cryptocurrency videos due to the overwhelming number of shills out there, I do not own any Mana or Engine Coin. This is not an advertisement to buy either. If you choose to buy either, please do your own research. I am not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This is purely for education and entertainment purposes only. So what is an NFT? In order to understand what an NFT is, we first have to understand what blockchain is. Blockchain is a technology that powers Bitcoin. And so to explain how an NFT works, we first have to explain how Bitcoin works without getting super technical. So we're not gonna get into cryptographic hashing or consensus algorithms. We just need a very clear top-down bird's eye view perspective on how the technology works under the hood. So Bitcoin works on the principle of something called a distributed ledger. Traditionally records like finance, medical, personal, etc., were stored at a bank, a government institution, or for example, a gaming platform like Final Fantasy XIV or World of Warcraft. And in the case of the latter, the record is maintained on Square and Blizzard centralized servers. The server itself is what authenticates whether or not a change to any information is valid. But there are two problems with this approach. The first problem is that there's a single point of failure. If the server is hacked or there's some kind of mismanagement of records, you're pretty much toast. And the second problem, which is probably the more important one, is the matter of trust. Because in a centralized server setup, you basically have one entity that has complete power to revoke the transaction or ownership. So you're essentially trusting that centralized authority with the data integrity. But in Bitcoin, the ledger, which is a copy of every transaction ever recorded, is publicly distributed across a network of independent and anonymous servers or nodes. And those ledger transactions are verified and written onto blocks and chained together using cryptography, hence blockchain. So if one node or one copy of the ledger ever goes down on the network, the communal ledger remains intact. And more importantly, if any one node mismanages or tries to falsify a record, the transaction won't go through. Because in order for a transaction to be valid, there has to be community consensus. So any one individual ledger needs to communicate and match the ledgers of those on the network. And every record that does reach consensus on the blockchain is immutable. Since Bitcoin's launch in 2009, it's processed something north of tens of trillions of dollars in transactions, and it has never been hacked once, as in literally zero. The centralized exchanges selling those Bitcoins on the open market like Mt. Gox, they have been hacked, but the protocol itself has not. And so NFTs more or less work the same way, but instead of a distributed communal ledger of financial transactions, it's a distributed communal ledger of non-fungible tokens. Non-fungible simply means that each token is unique. An example of a fungible item would be something like a dollar. One dollar in my pocket would equal the dollar in someone else's pocket. A fungible item is equally divisible and identical for all intents and purposes, but NFTs are not divisible. An example of a non-fungible item would be something like artwork. You can't simply divide a Mona Lisa in half like you could with a dollar, and NFTs are their own unique thing, and they can't be counterfeited. So think of them sort of like a unique object that only exists digitally on a blockchain. Let's use an example from Final Fantasy just to make things easier. In Final Fantasy VII Remake, there's a weapon you can get called the Twin Stinger for Cloud. Right now, anyone who plays VII Remake can acquire a Twin Stinger once you reach the drum. But let's imagine if there were an NFT weapon. Let's call it the Triple Stinger. 
with eight link material slots. And so how it'll work is that Square will mint 100 of these triple stingers and then bake into the rules of the protocol that only 100 of them will ever exist. And so this weapon can be bartered among the players, it can be sold, it can even potentially be broken down and recrafted. And you might be wondering, what stops Square from just minting another 100? Or even just invalidating the ownership, since it is just all computer code and it's all digital? Couldn't they just mint more like they do with gill and potions and having you earn them in battle after fighting an enemy? Well, no, for the same reason why Bitcoin can't simply be conjured out of thin air without proof of work. So just imagine instead, if every Final Fantasy VII Remake player on the network held a copy of the communal ledger. And that ledger is a public record of ownership and transactions. So who owns which copy of the Triple Stinger and which hand passed it onto which hand. That way, no one, not Square, not individual players, can tamper with the communal ledger. And so ownership of a Triple Stinger is secured by community consensus. As you can see, this has potentially huge possibilities and huge implications, not just for Final Fantasy, but just games in general, especially for MMOs. And this goes even beyond weapons. There's game currency, rare materia, rare items, rare chocobos, plots of virtual land, NFT playing cards like Pokemon or Magic the Gathering or Triple Triad from Final Fantasy VIII. How the gaming landscape currently works today is that gaming is a very centralized experience. So you have a game company that creates the rules and then constantly enforces them. Square even recently banned 5,000 players for real money trading, probably for good reason, but just as an example. NFTs basically eliminate this problem by making the community more self-governing via blockchain. Imagine if Final Fantasy XIV had inherent scarcity built into its world via NFTs across all universes, lands, and players. Currently, the supply of quote-unquote stuff is theoretically infinite. You do have to quote unquote work for it, but new gill, new items, new weapons, armor are sort of created out of thin air. But imagine instead if there were a limited supply of wood, metals, currency, land, crafting items that can be validly traded, and that the value of those items themselves comes from digital scarcity. Almost instantly, the gaming experience would be far more satisfying and personable because humans are natural scavengers. We love collecting rare items and we're wired to collect and hoard things to an extent. It's part of something called Maslow's hierarchy of needs dating back to our hunter and gatherer days. Items you collect and own have value due to something called the endowment effect in the human psyche. Sort of like how you may treat your PlayStation 5 DualSense controller extra careful because you own it, but you'd probably be a little bit more cavalier with squeezing that trigger button extra hard if that controller belonged to a stranger. Three criteria basically give a collectible thing its value. Rarity, so something with a scarce supply, which makes it harder to acquire. Provenance, which is an item's origin, its certificate of record and authenticity, whether it's based on the reputation of the creator or the fame of the previous owners. And quality, in essence, a combination of aesthetic and utility, judged on factors like condition, preservation, value of materials, etc. And it's only recently with the adoption of blockchain technology that digital collectibles could exist. Without blockchain and smart contracts, these three criteria couldn't be replicated in a digital format, since anything digital Digital, such as a JPEG or a PDF document could just be copy and pasted. Or in the case of a video game, rare in-game items, weapons, and gill could simply be conjured up by creating another copy of the game. But NFTs make the rarity, provenance, and quality assurance criteria actually possible via blockchain and smart contracts. Without getting into the weeds of it all, that smart contract could say that only 100 copies of this triple stinger weapon could ever exist, or that maybe only 10 of a moon silver blade can ever exist in League of Legends. And if your favorite League of Legends player owned that NFT and used it to win, say, a world championship, owning that NFT would be the digital equivalent of owning a autographed baseball of Juan Soto or Michael Trout, for example. And even in a video game, especially in RPGs, we love collecting and hoarding rare items, key items, weapons, vehicles, even virtual pets. And video games are basically just taking that same scavenging mentality onto the next level. Digital hoarding can actually have a legitimate purpose because the items that you gain from battle or collecting or crafting are scarce, and therefore they have real value. NFTs are basically just taking that property of scarcity in real life to the next level across everyone playing in that same game. So 1,000 players, for example, playing the same game and interacting in a common ecosystem of digitally scarce items can now, in a sense, own a piece of that game. And that alone can potentially radically change the landscape of how that game is even played. You can barter rare items or hold community challenges to win rare items or trade a lunar whale for 100 golden Jacobos. NFTs elevate that game's communal experience to another level of realism and fun. Blockchain as a technology is still evolving pretty fast and its applications are fastly evolving beyond Bitcoin. It's already being used in games like Decentraland that use the mana token to craft NFTs 
or Vulcanverse on the VeChain ecosystem. There are even emerging game companies like Illuvium that are building NFT-based fantasy games. So it's only a matter of time before NFTs affect the gaming world as a whole in a very big way, and probably far sooner than we think. Right now, playing a Final Fantasy game, the experience you have playing it is yours alone. And all the items and weapons and armor and gill and materia, magicite, everything you gain during that playthrough only has value within that experience. But imagine a Final Fantasy game where a piece of materia is digitally scarce and has real world value to other players. For example, only 100 Knights of the Round materia will ever exist, or only one kind of Chocobo will ever exist, or one kind of Moogle will ever exist. Imagine owning, actually owning, an apartment in Midgar that is verifiably and uniquely yours. So you're not just playing Final Fantasy anymore. You actually own a piece of its world, or its characters, or its story. And grinding for weapons and items and gill, that entire experience that you have playing the game has real value within that community. Basically, imagine a Final Fantasy that is no longer a fantasy, but a gaming experience that becomes real. Now, there will be issues to sort out, like real money trading and even potential anti-money laundering, but the game-changing possibilities at this point are just too big to ignore. And the reason why NFTs are becoming such a big thing lately is because blockchain technology and even cryptocurrency in general is gaining more legitimacy and adoption. Like Michael Saylor and MicroStrategies buying up Bitcoin, Jack Dorsey from Square, PayPal, Visa, even Elon Musk, Martian Jesus himself, just bought $1.5 billion in Bitcoin. So NFTs will be coming to games eventually. The only real question now is what form will it take? What consensus method will it use? And how will they interact with each other? Will you be able to trade NFTs across different games and different series? I'll definitely be keeping an eye out for any developments to NFTs and blockchain specifically, because I feel like we've only barely scratched the surface as far as what's truly possible going forward. This has the potential to change the way we play so many games and I can't wait to see what they come up with sooner rather than later. As always, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you find these videos helpful or entertaining. Dislike if not. And until the next video, stay tuned and take care.